interesting uh, with our recruiting now that we have the guys uh, in or have the letters in. Uh, we're excited about these two because they really epitomize the versatility, uh, the multi-dimension ability, uh, the two-way player uh, mindset that you want to have. And they bring size. They bring size. They bring length. They bring a tenaciousness. And most importantly, they bring a high level of improvement uh, mindset, a high level of improvement mindset ability that they're already showing that we think will even be more so here. And uh, with Jawan, Jawan has done nothing but get better. He, he's, a, he's one of those young men that's a year-round winner, which is what we don't want to get away from. And um, he wins in the summer, he wins in the winter. He's well coached in both areas. And one of the great tributes to his improvement was him being named the most improved player in the EYBL. And for those of you that follow that uh, with any with any eyes whatsoever, you know how, how tough of an environment that is. And uh, that gets measured from spring through the summer. And there's a lot of really good players that, that participate in that. So for him to, to get that on that circuit was a big deal. And, and what I like about him is that he's going to do whatever you ask him to do uh, to win the game on both ends of the floor. I think he's going to be uh, very versatile in the way that he can defend different people. I think he's going to be able to get out and guard on the perimeter. He's a very good post defender, very good at defending ball screens, and uh, and I think he's got a, I think he's got that leadership ability that you, that you want defensively to help hold his teammates accountable. And he'll have to grow into that in college, but I think he's shown that already offensively. He can not only score at the rim, he can not only run the court, but he can stretch the defense. And I think he'll become a consistent three-point shooter over time. But I also like that that as a that it is a is a bigger player, he can really drive the ball. And we were able to see that improvement level in him. And I think as he gains strength and confidence in his ball handling and in his shooting, he's going to get better and better. But he's an outstanding young man, uh, great family. I mean, absolutely great family. And. Uh, um, just uh, when you're around him, you, you enjoy it. I mean, he's got a very infectious personality. Agugwa, or, or OG, as everybody really refers to him, is a guy that, as the story really goes, we went to Atlanta to an early tournament, and we were watching other players, and we were watching a couple other guys on his team, Team Thad, this summer. And I was just enthralled with his ability defensively, especially on the ball and the press, the ground that he covered. And the crazy thing is, is the original program that we bought, he wasn't in it. And uh, he wasn't listed. And so we didn't know if we were watching a junior or a senior. I just knew that I was watching a guy that had tremendous length, covered a lot of ground, uh, ran the court extremely hard, and uh, played with a really great spirit. And uh, we later found out after the game, obviously, who he was, followed him some more that weekend, and uh, got on the phone with him. And when he was done, realized that um, he had connections to Bloomington. He had been to Bloomington, uh, got to know about his background, got to know about his family, got to know about having a brother in the NFL, and just really, really started the process in, in a big way. But I was, uh, I was, I, we were into him before we even knew his name. And I think that's, that's rare because uh, you buy these books and there's so much information on them, and all of a sudden there's one where there's not a, his name's not in it. But um, uh, to us, when we started to watch film, then we started to see his versatility. And uh, was a very good three-point shooter as a junior. One of the open gyms that I went to uh, when we were still recruiting him, uh, he, he was ridiculous in the pick and pop. He probably made seven or eight threes just in the open gym that I was at, you know, of, of setting screens, uh, stepping back, spotting up. And so he's really one of those players that he's just going to get better and better and better. I like the way he was coached uh, in the summertime by, by the Team Thad people. And, and I don't know his coaches real well, but I like what I've seen on film. And we're looking forward to following him this year. He brings, he brings tremendous length. Uh, he's very unassuming in, in the sense that I don't think he has any idea how good he's going to be. I would say that about both of them. I would say both of them are going to really, really get better, which is exactly what we've tried to build this program on. This class, to me, reminds me with two in it right now of the class that we had with, with Victor and Will 
early on. Nobody really knew a lot about them, but we felt really strong about both of them. And um, now they're going to have to come in this gym and spend 365 days a year in it, just like Will and, and Victor did, to, to gain that kind of ability here at Indiana. But that's the kind of upside we're talking about. And um, OG is going to be, he can cover ground on the, on the glass. Uh, he can cover ground defensively. I think he's, I think like both of them, they're going to have to get better at guarding quickness and speed at the collegiate game, which most do. But we try to spend time at that. And obviously, you know, after the other night, we've got to spend even more time at that. But I think that they'll be able to become uh, what we want them to be on both ends of the court with a, with a ton of upside. Again, OG, tremendously well-raised. Uh, father's a teacher at a university, uh, love his family, and I mean, and that's, that's what we want. When you, we, you want to recruit year-round winners, you want to recruit people that have family values. And, and then you start to look at the athletic upside, the, the competitive upside, the intelligence upside, the character slash work ethic upside, and if you can answer, if you can answer yes to those, then you feel pretty good about it, and, and we feel really good about that. But we've got to stay really, really true to making sure that we're bringing in young people that, that uh, fit what we're trying to do uh, in all areas and uh, on and off the court and at the same time can come in here and, and, uh, and help us win a lot of games and, and, and be leaders on and off the floor. And they're both outstanding students, so we feel really good about that, feel great about it. So. I uh, love their size, and I think both of them could potentially even get bigger. I think OG's bigger since we even recruited them, started recruiting them in the summer. But uh, you cannot teach that length, and, and length is such a very important part of anything that you're trying to do offensively or defensively. And it, it, every, every little bit matters. I mean, right now on our team, we're blocking out better, but we're not getting as many 50-50 balls. Well, length and tenacity have something to do with that. And, and, those guys will, will certainly help in, in many, many areas. So, any questions on the recruiting? Did you guys have a chance yeah, I don't have it off the top of my head what it is, but he's, uh, his wingspan is extremely long. I could get that for you later. Okay. Yeah. You know what, you could probably go have somebody go get that for us. I don't know if Janae's in there, though. I didn't see him right before I came down. So, Let's see if we can get that. Go ahead. Oh, I, they've been up big in their forwards. They're, 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 they're going to be able to do a lot of different things. I think a lot of it will come down to what kind of summers they have and the strength that they put on. And um, that, that'll be important. But, but they're both pretty natural rebounders. Uh, they, they, they cover a lot of ground. They have what's so important for, for, for bigger players is that they have short space quickness. And I think, I think OG is, is when, when he continues to build his awareness of what he's capable of, I, I think you'll see even more there. Juwan's a pretty, Juwan sees a lot of different things. He, he's, he's, he's got, uh, he's done a pretty good job of help side defense, things of that nature. So all those things play into it. So I, I would anticipate both of them coming in here when that time comes and challenging to play. No question about it. We have more of a, I think we always do. I, I think we always want to have the defensive potential. I mean, last year certainly uh, there was such a need for the shooting, right? But at the same time, Rob Johnson, and, then, and again, we're not coming off a great game by any stretch with the freshman, but James Blackman is making tremendous strides defensively. Robert Johnson has come in here being a very good defender. Max wants to be a good defender. They, they realize what, it just takes a bit, you know, once they get in here, that if you really want to be successful, you've got to play both ends of the floor at an extremely high level. And the other thing that, that's so huge, I was going to talk about this when we are talking about our team, is young players, really, especially ones that have scored a lot of points, and this was where a guy like Victor and Will were different. They are not used to having to get their energy, all right, and get their aggressiveness from the defensive side of the court because scoring is so easy for them and shooting is so easy for them. And when you get to this level, if you're going to keep making steps as a player at this level and have a chance to play above and beyond, the quicker you learn that your energy on the offensive end will come from your defensive abilities and your ability to get stops, be a team defender, make plays, get deflections, get steals, all those different things, that your energy just derives from that because it makes everybody else on your team so much energetic. 
when, when guys learn that, and we're in the process of that. I think our film showed the other night that, that, um, that, we, that we weren't there as much. But there were certain times in that game, especially later in the first half, our break was incredible because our defensive energy was so strong. And again, it, it's an inconsistency for us right now, but when younger players learn that. So in answer to your question, I think they come with that. But again, we're not looking, we're not trying to recruit role players that just play one end of the court or situational players that just do one or two things on that end of the court. We're looking for guys that can be well-rounded, complete players. And because of their size and length, we knew going into this class, getting length was going to be really, really important for us. So that, does that make sense? Okay. Yes, Jeff. Juwan in the EYBL, you mentioned most improved player. I think it was pretty clear from Sacramento on that there was a real improvement, specifically the way he defended. He had to defend most players. Mm -hmm. were, were there a couple of games maybe that stuck out to you more as far as who he defended or things that you saw that really got better or mm -hmm. anything that you saw maybe in, in, in July that really caught your attention? They won big games. They won, they won the games a lot of times against the teams that that might have had more name guys, higher ranked guys, uh, more notoriety, uh, big men. I think he rose to that occasion. So I can't give you one specific occasion because there were numerous occasions. And I think that's the, that's the biggest thing. And again, um, ratings are nice, okay? Those things are cool, but they don't win you any games, you know, when you get out into the, into the, uh, into the mix. I'm not sure where the Eastern Washington guys were ranked, but I know they, those three of them were really, really good the other night. And the bottom line is, it, it, it's like we, we say all the time, it doesn't matter where you're ranked, because in the last 13 years, only 27% of the consensus top 100 have played an NBA game. So again, they're, they're fun, they're fun to talk about, they're fun to digest. I think it, it's, it's a lot more about what the upside is and what they're capable of when they get there. Sometimes you hit, sometimes you miss. But the bottom, and, it, and sometimes you hit and miss on guys that are highly ranked. But, but you try to do your best at, at looking at all the different traits where there's upside. And if there's upside, then there's a chance for them to get a lot better in all those areas. And I think that's, that's the case with those two. Sure, absolutely. Yeah, we don't make many decisions here without uh, we don't make many decisions here without going through all of that. So you always have to be prepared for uh, what could happen down the road. And those things work themselves out. You know, it's it's a it's a it's a level of play where people are going to potentially have opportunities to go pro. We've had that. You know, before you got on the beat, or even last year, we've had that where guys leave. That's all part of it. But uh, absolutely, we go through those things. Anything else? Any follow-up to that? Well, how much Hold on, do you have a follow-up to that? Uh, I guess, you know, how far into that do you get? I mean, just looking at individual cases here, you've got it over by two with this class. Um, it it seems like there's a lot of moving parts with that. Well, there's always a lot of moving parts. It's a, a three, recruiting is a 365-day uh, exercise. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of moving parts. And there's always going to be that. And there's always going to be uh, different situations that play out. And if you look at the history of it, they seem to play out. I mean, if you go back through the times, they seem to play out pretty well. Maybe, are you, do you see more hurdles coming with Bill of Rights with all the scholarship guarantees and whatnot? No, not whatsoever. I don't see any hurdles whatsoever. I think the student athletes here are in a really good position. And uh, I think there's a lot of things that go in. It's a two-way street. You know, the Bill of Rights is one thing, but there's a two-way street into what student athletes have to fulfill as well. And I think we, and that's that's part of the whole moving part. It's not a static, uh, it's not a static situation. It's constantly moving, and um, there's nothing in the Bill of Rights that stops a player from deciding to go pro. There's nothing in the Bill of Rights that stops a player from deciding that he wants to go somewhere else. So there's always going to be moving parts. So the number one thing you have to do as a coach and in, in, in your sport is you have to continue to not only work in the present day, but you have to work for the future constantly and you have to be able to project and um, that's all part of it so uh, there's a lot of that stuff that goes into every decision that we make it's just not always anything that we look at and bring about and talk about in a public manner but uh, it's all stuff that uh, that you definitely you equate in your decision making process anything else
Well, everywhere. Everywhere. I mean, I think, I think the bottom line is when you're looking at upside, you're looking at everywhere. I mean, there, there's really no, I don't know many players that don't have to get better in every area of the game. You know, we're, we're shooting the ball at 46, 48 percent. We've made 49 threes in five games, and I can pick about 18, 19 to 20 shots that if we'd have, if we'd have shot the ball correctly and had the proper footwork or the proper follow through, we'd have made more of those. And, and we didn't make our 49th three of the year last year until the 10th game. All right, right now we've already got 49 threes and, and we, we shoot the ball at a high rate and I watch the film and we break it down with players and when we work on our practices, there's constant room for shooting the ball better. So I think in any player situation, you constantly want to be moving it forward uh, to, that they understand that, that, that they got to keep chasing perfection. You know, perfection's it's hard to get, I'm sure. Okay, I've never, never met anybody that, that is truly perfect, okay? But the bottom line is you want to keep chasing it. And I think in any player's case, they want to try to get better every day at everything. And, that incre and, that, and then that's what builds the hunger for winning. I think when you get satisfied in any area of your game is when you lose a little bit of that hunger for what it's all about. And I think with those players, they'll just, they'll just get better and better at those type of things if they have the work ethic that we think they do. All right, let's see. Yeah, OG's wingspan is almost 7'2", and his height is 6'7". And Juwan has uh, got a wingspan of 6'11", and his height is 6'7 and a half. So. All right, basketball-wise, we, uh, we're off today. So we have to take a couple of days off this week. And um, we had, it, yesterday was a practice that was good to have because uh, we had five games in 11 days. And as much as we try to fundamentally improve in those practices, it's very hard when you're having that kind of that was amount of games to go to the duration and go to the it, it, the length of the intensity level inside of that duration that you want to get. And yesterday was very, very good for us to break that down, whether it was two on two, whether it was countless uh, sessions of four on four uh, with with competitive parts of getting three stops in a row for your team in there and and everything you do is about getting better at every aspect of it are we getting better shooting the ball moving without the ball are we getting better with the rebounding are we getting better with our defensive coverages are we getting better at guarding the ball are we getting better with our help and uh we spent a lot of time on that a lot of time and and uh, a lot of time on our interior defense a lot of time on our guarding the ball i think the biggest thing that our players will take from the other night is that especially our young ones I'm not sure that they truly understood the speed of the game, you know, and, and I don't want to say that it surprised them, but I think the surprise is when you're really good and when you're young, you, you win a lot of games or you have a lot of success, the other team goes away. At this level, they don't go away. They, they do not go away. And this team had such an ability to play downhill that I think we learned a lot about that. And I think... Uh, with the exception of Yogi, and he doesn't do it all the time, but when Yogi's truly in a downhill game, uh, he's very hard to guard. Well, they had, they had some different guys that were in a downhill game. And as much as we think we are, we learned a lot about it that we're not as much. And um, uh, we've got to continue to get better at that. We did not handle the intensity of their drives as well. Our switching was sporadic. And the biggest thing that we wanted to do was keep them out of the paint, so, but at the same time not have to overhelp on threes. Uh, until late, we did a good job on the three. We did not do a great job of keeping them out of the paint. And then when the game was in the balance, you know, we had some of those mistakes. We didn't, uh, we didn't block out a couple times. Uh, late in the game, when number 10 made a three at the top, uh, where we were never supposed to leave, we had the ball under control. And Nick ended up helping on the dribble, and we had the dribble under control, and we give up a three at the top of the key. One of the big reasons we led the league in three-point defense was because we didn't overhelp last year. When the ball was covered, we moved, and it took us a while to learn that. And I think it's important for all of us as coaches uh, to, to keep that in perspective, that it takes a while for that to get done. Because, because this team had tremendous ability to drive the ball to create threes. And unfortunately, we gave them too many angles to get to the rim to finish shots. And uh, in the bottom line, 55, we never matched his intensity. And we never matched his intensity and the spirit of toughness that he played with the entire night. And we knew that as coaches going into the, in, in, into the game. We tried to get that across on film, but until they see it 
and deal with it. I mean, it's very rare that you have a player that plays that position that facilitates the offense all the different ways that he can facilitate it. But uh, they're, a, they're a very good team. They're one of those teams that uh, all of a sudden it's the second week of the tournament in March and everybody's talking about them and they're everybody's favorite team to follow because they're exciting to watch. I mean, they could be that, they could be that type of team. And, and the bottom line is you don't want to lose, but you want to learn a lot from it. You want to learn from winning, and you better make sure when you lose you learn a lot from that too. And that's what we're trying to, that's what we're trying to get across as, as much as anything else. Big key points for us right now, we've got to get the, the uh, we, we've got to score more points in the paint, and at the same time we've got to take away more scoring opportunities in the paint for the other team because we're just letting the ball get in there too much, too many different times. And I think it's going to be crucial that we do a much better job with that. And um, defensively in transition, we've got to keep getting back to find people. But the bottom line is we've just got to improve our ability to guard the ball, to keep it out of the paint, at the same time not become a team that overhelps and gives up threes. Because in this league, then you will not win. Offensively, we can play faster, especially getting the ball out of the basket. When we just run and get behind the defense like Troy did, you saw the, you saw the uh, benefits of that. We get out and run the wings when the ball is moving the way that it's capable of. Uh, it's important. But again, looking at our youth of our team, especially with James and Rob, the learning lesson there is your defensive energy and, 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 and being so locked in and engaged to what you have to do defensively, that's what creates your offense. I thought the SMU game and the Lamar game, James's defense, where he came out, and, and again, he didn't, nobody was playing what I would characterize as bad defense. We weren't as good. We gave up angles. We, uh, we weren't as ready for that ball coming at us. Our switches, like I mentioned, weren't as good. We weren't as aware at times, especially when we went zone late. But the bottom line is we weren't as aggressive on offense as we needed to be either. You know, Rob having four turnovers and three or four of those passes were one-hand passes. That's not, that's not fundamental basketball. James wasn't as aggressive as he needs to be, looking for a shot, looking for the drives, things of that nature. Yogi, the game was giving us middle drive. They were giving us the rim. And, and you could look back and say we were giving them the rim, not on purpose, but they were giving us the rim. And Yogi did a tremendous job of taking advantage of that, and Troy did a tremendous job of getting behind in that penetration. So every time we had downhill action going, we got something good. The problem was we weren't downhill enough, and they were downhill a lot, and we didn't stop it. And downhill is not just driving the ball uh, and, and covering a little bit of ground. Downhill is driving it like a bull rush, and that ball is out in front, and you're just daring somebody to stop you. And we didn't do as good a job with that. And... Um, um, bottom line, when a team's giving up 12 threes, or when a team is scoring 12 threes a game, you've got to be very conscious of that. And, uh, but unfortunately, um, it wasn't that we didn't overhelp, we just didn't guard the initial thrust of driving the way that we needed to guard it as well. But we got better yesterday, I have no doubt about that. Today we'll be off the court, but um, uh, do some, do some road trip, team bonding type of stuff. Tomorrow we'll be back at it. Friday night we'll play against a very hungry, hard-driving, tough-playing team that has two guys averaging 60 and another guy 12, well-coached with Wes Miller uh, and uh, outstanding staff. Mike Roberts is on that staff uh, who played here, had a very good career. You've got uh, Dwayne Simpkins, Jr., who played at Maryland, outstanding young coach. Jackie Manuel played at Carolina, played a little bit in the NBA. He's on that staff. So uh, I got four former head coaches on my staff, but we don't want to play four on four or five on five against that staff on the court. But we're excited uh, for that game and, and excited for a big crowd and then get ready for next week. So go ahead. If you're stopping defensive penetration, what's the bigger issue? Is it technique or is it technique? It's technique as much. We had a couple of miscommunications. I mean, we had some rules that really, if you follow them, they're very simple. Okay, but they're hard to do. They're simple. I mean, we, we knew exactly what we were supposed to switch, but you have to stay with it because a team like that is going to continue to turn the ball, turn the ball, turn the ball. And if that means one guy's guarding it the whole time on that switch, well, that's what it means. And we didn't want to. We, got a, we, we, we decided to diversify a little bit. You know, because we thought we had a better angle at guarding it or, you know, 
I could get through it. That's not what you do, you know, when you have a game plan like that. And I think they've got to learn that game plans are built for a reason. Uh, Tim Buckley averages probably on a scout like that. He's probably putting in 17, 18 hour days, as is Steve when he's doing his games and Chuck when he's doing his games. And we're all spending time on that game and all doing our stuff. But those game plans are built for a reason. You know, when a guy goes right or a guy shoots this or a guy gets there, it's built for a reason. You know, and we don't expect the players, obviously, to spend that kind of time in the film room. We do expect that kind of concentration and focus and listening. And it wasn't there as much the other night. And that's what we've got to continue to learn. It wasn't there because they didn't want it to be there. It was there because the fatigue of the game and the speed of the game brings some slippage that, that, that can hurt you at times inside of it. So it's not a, a little bit of its technique when it's, when it's a player driven, he drives right, he drives left type of thing. But very much on a penetration team, it's about taking away the elbows, especially with the dribble drive, the way that they play it. And, and they do an excellent job with it. And what makes it a problem is they've got five, outside of their starting lineup, which they went to, they had five players on the floor at any given time that could play behind the line and play at the rim. And that's, that's why they're a good team. That's why you've got to stay true to your game plan that much more. Oh, absolutely. I look back at last year's last three years of five game stats. I forgot that we beat Long Island by one in here, you know, on the second game of the year a year ago. And um, we, we've had close games. I mean, it, it takes a while for young teams to figure out that it does not matter who they're playing. And again, I don't think I think our players saw film early on. OK, of their three point shooting that we had everybody's attention. OK, so there was there's no overlook, look through, and then none of that. You know, there, there's there's none of that. And, and we work against that constantly. You can't make up the kind of threes they were making. OK, I mean, it, you don't even make a highlight tape. I mean, you just put their possessions on. But it takes a while for guys to understand, no, this is for real. I mean, and they're coming constantly. It was like a year ago when we played Long Island. No, that's the best assist guy in the country. All right, we've got to guard him at a high level. All right, and not over help because he's going to find people for layups and dunks and threes. And, and so, again, it's really, really learning to take those strengths. They work into that. We spend a lot of time on preparation, but we spend a lot more time on concepts. And, and uh, we've got to continue to get that down. We've got to continue. We see the improvement. I mean, I, I gave an example. The defensive blockouts are improving, grabbing the 50-50s, grabbing two-hand rebounds. I mean, think about it. They don't have anybody on the foul line. They missed the free throw. We have two guys going for the ball. They both grab at it with one hand. Neither one of them gets it. It goes out of bounds. Their possession. We give up a three. You know, that's sometimes it's just, I mean, it's not, it's not like anybody's saying, hey, let's go grab it with one hand. But the slippage comes in. You think it's a little easier than it is. And they've got to understand that it's, it's really a, it's a hard driving game constantly when you're playing against good teams and, and, um, and teams that want to be great too. So I have no doubt we'll get better. I have no doubt about it. And, and uh, 5 and 11, you can look at it one of two ways. Was it too much at this point in time for a young team? Probably. All right, am I glad we did it? Absolutely. Because they had to work through the number one thing that we're going to have to have, as any team has to have, to sustain, to have any type of sustainability. We didn't have it last year. We had it the two previous years. All right, is a consistent level of mental toughness. Now, how you define it, you, you kind of know it when you see it. But you've got to keep going through all these different things that make you better there. And that's why we'll continue to get better. Did you talk to Clayton Emmett or Jeremiah, considering where Connor was last? Not Jeremiah in that game. Game was too fast. And Emmett, absolutely. But this is where the four games probably caught up in this. Because the speed of the game was really, really hard for the guys that had been playing a lot of minutes. And, and uh, it wasn't anything that Emmett's not doing, and I, as I've said to him, and we were counting on Emmett. But that game was going so fast for a guy that didn't have real game experience like that. And now if he'd have played the last couple games considerable minutes or hadn't missed the four games, that's a whole other story. But that game was moving so fast that, uh, and again, playing small was not, was not the, the wrong way to do it. Our mistakes came more out of switches 
and uh, lack of communication, or some lack of communication, but just letting the ball get by us. But Emmett will be very good for us. I mean, he's, he, we definitely need him to get into the road.